We're gonna get right into it today. We're gonna talk about food, food production, where your food might be coming from in the very near future. Remember, Kissinger said, control the food, control the people. John Kerry's at it again. He declares war on U.S. farmers. Government farm confiscation is not off the table. Y'all, I'm trying to sound the alarm and let you guys know what's going on. Like a lot of people aren't paying attention. A lot of homesteaders don't want to talk about it. You guys are watching a lot of the folks that you watch and they're just acting like, you know, it's the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine. So we got to kind of get a handle on what's going on and we got to stay in the loop because Kissinger said control the food, control the people. You guys know who Kissinger is? You can go look him up. <laughs> He's an interesting fellow. <laughs> but he is uh, with Klaus and Soros and all these guys, man. So you guys got to please pay attention, okay? John Kerry declares war on you as farmers. Coming for your farms next, America. I told you. The Netherlands is just the pilot country. The war on farming is global because of the agenda behind it is global, okay? So we're trying to explain to you guys that they're clamping down on the food. They're going to... Cut off uh, food supplies, cut off production of food supplies, and they're working right now really hard while you're distracted with all the stuff, right? They're working right, right now, right, behind the scenes, and they're getting everything in place, okay? Remember all the food problems we had with the chicken processing plants and all the processing plants burning down and, and the, uh, euthanizing all those chickens and all that food uh, from, for nothing, <laughs> in my opinion. And uh, what they're doing though is they're going for centralizing the food system. Okay, so only a few big corporations are going to run the whole thing. I'll have some more videos coming up after this one about the food supply. And man, some of this stuff is really going get to your, get your goose. Okay, uh, enjoy this clip real quick. They are following an agenda called the 2030 agenda. These are these are restrictions and, and climate regulations that are that are imposed all over the world. So we're being hit hardest right now, and we might be the first ones. But it's very important for other people to know that they could be coming to you next. And what do you think Americans can take away from what's happening in the Netherlands? Well, I, from a Dutch perspective, I would say that Americans should be very happy that they have a Second Amendment and that you should protect that with all your all your strength. Ava Vlardingerbrook, thank you so much. Kerry insists that the United States must massively reduce farming to meet the radical green agenda goals laid out by the WEF, World Economic Forum, and the United Nations, UN. According to the former Secretary of State, the world can't tackle ch climate change without first addressing agricultural sectors, sectors' emissions, and farmers in the U.S. are front and center of his plans. A lot of people have no clue agriculture contributes to about 33% of all the emissions of the world. He said during his keynote address, we can't get to net zero, we don't get this job done unless agriculture is front and center as part of the solution. So all of us understand here the depths of this mission. Pigs on a Dutch farm, meat intended for the Spanish market. But after nearly 20 years, Annette Merkens and her husband have decided to stop. Soon they will sell all their livestock. But a farm like this could soon be a thing of the past. While farmers are now being pressured into selling their animals and find another profession, others insist they'll continue. In a few years, dairy farmer Jan van der Wind wants to hand over his herd to his son. He says the government should invest more in technology that reduces emissions from animal waste. Farmers have done a lot for this country, but the government doesn't seem to realize this. The minister talking about hugely attractive buyout packages, that's a ridiculous statement. Greenpeace says compensating farmers on a voluntary basis won't lead to a big enough reduction in nitrogen. The government should force farmers to stop. It has to happen now and it will be painful. Farmers have to be told, you will need to quit and we will withdraw your license. We will compensate you, but you have to stop. In this clip, what I'm providing you with is a, a clip from Mark Rutte, R-U-T-T-E. He's the Prime Minister of the Netherlands. He makes it clear where the food will come from. There's going to be four global food hubs controlled by the largest farming corporations on the planet. His policy is to bankrupt small farmers and forcibly buy the rest out. 
and it's well underway and I don't know if you guys are paying attention I'll just add this in as a caveat before I show you the clip they are literally buying farmers out they're literally paying them not to produce the food a lot of farmers are going for it has your family farm specifically been hurt yeah I think the biggest thing for us has been feed costs and you know resources uh, the Biden administration has really done nothing to you know ensure that we are getting the supplies that we need whether it's a tractor part for harvest season or maybe it's minerals that we can't get because American grown is not really happening farmers and ranchers are going out of business so being able to find supplies so we can run our dairy farm efficiently has been a struggle and also you know prices everybody's facing high fuel and diesel prices so you know when it comes to farming and during harvest season we're filling up those tractors and we're still you know wanting to supply food for americans but it's definitely a challenge british government has come forward to reward any farmer who would be ready to give up his or her land and quit farming the bbc carried the news of this latest move by the uk government it was reported that the government was offering a lump sum to any farmer who would be ready to give up or sell their farmlands the government said that the target of their generous offer was old farmers who couldn't embrace the modern technology in the farming sector. According to the government, these old farmers are supposed to move aside by retiring so younger farmers can operate effectively. So this is one thing we have to consider. So when a guy that grows 90% of his own food comes on and tells you guys that I'm ramping up my own food production, you should pay attention. <laughs> uh. You should really pay attention and you should be able to grow food and you can grow food in really small places um, and you know I'm gonna give you guys a couple books after this clip that could help you do that so the role of businesses in the agri-food sector should be stimulated and able to create scalable uh, solutions and here I'd like to highlight a, a World Economic Forum initiative in this regard the World Economic uh, Forum food uh, innovation hubs and these hubs in Africa, in Asia, in South America, and in Europe uh, will allow uh, businesses to connect regional stakeholders to skill innovations, because this is key, uh, skill innovations that can address food systems, challenge, food systems challenges. And here, uh, I'm particularly proud to announce that the Netherlands will host the Global Coordinating Secretariat of the World Economic Forum Food Innovation Hubs. So now all the pressure on the food production places kind of makes sense if you kind of start adding everything up right they're going for centralized food production everyone's going to get their food from um you know these four hubs so to speak and uh we're just going to see how that goes but in the meantime <laughs> you might want to consider growing your own food even um you know even just your greens if you cannot grow food if you don't have the space look into microgreens right food water and shelter should be your major priority these are 10 foot boards I'm gonna cut a couple of them down I'm gonna put a little box together and just show you how easy it is if you get eight foot boards then you can cut one in half and then you'll have the ends the bed should be eight foot long and four foot wide So you can build your bed as high as you want. We have some that are four boards high and some that are two boards high. And then you just put your little four by four in all your corners and you build it up as high as you want. Something you guys should think long and hard about because not only is food gonna get expensive, and maybe even hard to get you guys are buying seeds make sure you're getting heirloom seeds thumbs up on the way out make sure you subscribe to our channel a lot of people getting unsubscribed and share the video so people know what's going on with the food we gotta kind of kind of stay ahead of it so we don't get caught flat-footed all right we'll see you on the next video yeah the books you stay to the end so you get the tip there's a book called carrots love tomatoes that's an excellent companion planting um, book and also square foot gardening so you guys can learn how to grow a lot of food in small spaces You don't need 11 acres to grow a lot of food You just need a, a place to do it and a little understanding and then you can you know get better every single year So those are two good books that you guys can get and also learn how to grow microgreens if you're in an apartment and you just can't get in the dirt 
Look into microgreens. You can get tons of nutrition by growing microgreens right on your windowsill. So easy to do, okay? So I just wanted to give you that information on the way out, and thanks for staying to the end. Why should they? This is their life. It's like they are criminals. It's like they are doing something bad. They produce food, except for water and oxygen. We need food. But they damage are... the nature at the same time. No, no, that's, that's, that's just, that's, that's bull crap, I would say. Caroline van der Plaas has grown into a political force to be reckoned with after her farmer citizens movement became the largest party in all Dutch provinces during elections in March. While she supports compensating farmers who want to quit, her party is firmly against stricter measures, possibly delaying government plans to half nitrogen emissions by 2030.